guys, how's it going? Um, welcome back. At this point, we should be completely done with our um, crease layer and ready to move on. Um, the next step that we're going to do is our one of our blushing layers and we're going to be using the uh, Bountiful Baby Warm Blush and get you out about three-fourths of a well because this is going to be an all-over oh, all over the kit um, layer so we're going to need quite a bit of paint and this is about how you should be looking on your doll hope you can see that Now, you should be able to tell a big difference after this layer. The warm blush really warms the kit up real nice and gives it, in my opinion, a really nice, uh, just a warm skin tone. But we gotta be careful. We don't wanna overdo it because this color can turn ugly quick. Um, if you use too much okay so we're gonna keep this thin um, you know you've got too much if you're looking kind of orangish kind of coppery you know you've got too much okay and you're gonna get out just uh, about a brush on one side and a brush on the other and we're gonna test it and see how much paint we have here. You okay, bud? Yeah. Okay, and I believe we're going to add just a touch more. We'll just do just a brush tip worth. And that should tell me about how my color is looking. Okay. That looks about right. We get a really thin color here. And if you would like to add a, um, a cool color just to kind of tone it, tone it down a little bit, tone down the coppery, um, you can. I mean, if you're kind of scared of it or you just don't feel too comfortable using that color, I usually don't tone mine down any, but just a little bit here since I got some color left over in the well.
I hate to see paint go to waste. That didn't make much of a difference anyway. But it's okay. The paint's in there and I'm not wasting it. <laughs> so, okay guys, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and soak our brush and then wipe our sponge. And I'm using a peak sponge for this layer. wonder why I'm adding so much to start to the sponge. It's because I haven't used a sponge in a while, so it's real good and dried out. Okay, and as always, I'm just going to start by dabbing into my creases. Where my uh, sponge is not gonna pick up. I'm sorry, not gonna reach. For some reason, here lately, I have been forgetting to do inside, I'm sorry, not inside, but the outside creases around my nose, and I don't know why. I've never had an issue before until now, but and it's just that area I keep forgetting for some reason. And you, do, I mean, if you don't technically want to dip inside your creases and get that warm blush color in there, I guess you don't really have to um, because we've already got our crease color in. But I think it brings the colors out nicely when you do. So let's see where we're at with our color here. And guys, we're actually getting close to the finish. This will be our last all over layer. All over, um, yeah, all over layer. Well, then after this, we'll be doing our blush um, and our fine details like capillaries, and then eyebrows, and then we'll be varnishing. Okay. But if you're not happy, of course, you can always add whatever else you'd like if you're not happy with the look of your doll. But really, to be honest with you, you're probably not going to be able to tell exactly what your doll's going to look like until you get the blush on because the blush it makes a really big difference in the all over look of your doll. So don't get discouraged. If your doll's looking like it's just really light and looks kind of, nah, I don't know, you're just not sure about it, don't 
like I said, don't get discouraged. Wait until um, you've got on your blush and everything and then make a decision based on that. And then you can always go back and add to, okay? So, okay guys, so I'm going to go ahead and let you finish up the warm blush. Um, make sure you put it on all of your kit, all of your limbs, the rest of your head. And then we're going to bake. And then I'll see you back here, okay? See you in just see you shortly. Hey guys, um, I'm back and ready to do our blushing layers. Um, I'm gonna go ahead also and show you how to do your eyebrows. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you on the doll because I do not paint my eyebrows. I root my eyebrows. But I am going to show you um, to the best I can without actually doing it. Um, you'll want to mix up your paint. You've got a, a brow brown paint that is included with your Bountiful Baby Kit. Um, I find when painting eyebrows it's easiest to use thinning medium um, but of course if you don't have that you don't you know you don't have to use it um, just try to keep your paint a little bit thick so you know with, without going too dark um, and it is a challenge to get that consistency perfect so um, but I am going to show you here um, when you mix your paint up, you're going to want to get your paintbrush uh, with as few hairs as possible. Hopefully you can see that. I've got all the hairs plucked out of this except for like one or two. Um, and I do paint my eyebrows when I have to, when my like with customs and things like that. But um, if otherwise, I mean it's rare that I have to paint my eyebrows. So anyway. Um, it took me probably two years to master painting eyebrows and that was because I would make a doll when I first started learning to paint them I would make the doll attempt to paint the eyebrows fail <laughs> and just go ahead and root them and eventually after practicing on so many dolls I kind of got the hang of it um, some people like to use Prisma pencils on their eyebrows um, and if you do I mean that's okay it's your choice but what I found with the Prisma pencils the brown um, on my dolls anyway when I put the Prisma pencils on it turns yellow so if yours does not, by all means, feel free to use it, but mine does. So, I'm going to show you on the doll without adding any paint. And then I'm going to show you, give you an example. Okay, so what you're going to do is find your point. Um, usually, the sculptors will have a brow bone. Okay, you're going to want to place your eyebrows right there on the brow bone. So you'll want to feel around for that. Sometimes you have to really, really search. What I like to do is locate my brow bone, put a little speck of paint that I can easily blend in, and then do the same. Um, where to start and end your eyebrows? You're going to go to the corner of the nose, side of the nose, go straight up to the brow bone. And that's where you're going to start. So you're going to start here and you're going to end right 
where that eye ends. Okay? So, from about here to here is where her eyebrows are going to be. So, when you've got your paint, you're just going to want to start with your central, central eyebrow, and then your little hairs here are going to come up to meet that central line. Okay? And as you go further towards the end of the eyebrow, they're going to lay flatter. You also are going to have a few little hairs up here at top. And you'll see what I mean. This is your central eyebrow, basically the main shape. I'm drawing it large so you can see. Your little hairs are going to come in at an angle and meet that central line. Okay. And as you get, like I said, as you get further towards the end, the hairs will lay flatter. And then, you're going to have a few little hairs here at top. It's also going to lay... Okay. And there's your eyebrow. I know it kind of, it looks kind of funny that way. Let's see. Space it out a little bit. Now remember, you're painting hair. So what happens when you get more hair and all your hairs are meeting in one spot? versus single hairs. They get darker. So, to increase the realism of your eyebrows, you're going to want to make your central line a bit darker. Okay? So, I hope that helps you out. Um, that's as pretty much as much as I can help you out without doing it myself. And like I said, I just, I just don't. Um, if you do plan on rooting your eyebrows, you're going to just follow the same pattern. You can also draw out on, paint out on your doll how you're going to root your eyebrows. And then you can come back and root over that. Okay? So, we're ready to start our blushing. We've got our warm blush done and baked and over with, out of the way. By this time, your doll should be looking about like this. you can see that good okay so with blushing your kit comes with the lip blush and nail okay If you have other blushing colors, 
you can you can use those. This is the color I had out for my lips. So I'm just going to go ahead and add to that so I don't waste it. Because I probably will put one more layer on my lips. Sorry guys, I'm just mixing up this paint I already had here in my well for the blushing from the lip color. So um, basically what you're going to want to do is mix you up some lip color like I showed you. Just mix that lip color up. Just like you're putting a coat of paint on your lips. Just want to make sure you mix it up extra, extra well. We don't want any little specks of paint. Those little ugly grainy specks. So, this is going to be my first blushing color. Well, my first blushing color. Um, I'll probably do it Maybe another version of it. I don't know. At this point, we'll just have to see. And also, guys, in your blushing, keep in mind your hair color, okay? Whatever hair color you're going to do. I'm thinking for mine, I'm going to do blonde. Because I don't do a lot of blonde dolls. So... I'm going to mix it up just a bit. And also, guys, at, at this point, if you um, you can go ahead and re-examine your creases and make sure that, you know, they still look nice. Um, make sure they haven't faded too much. I don't know if I told you guys this or not, but Genesis Heat Set Paints, um, they do fade just a bit when you bake them. So, when I put my color on and then I bake it, it's going to lighten just a bit. Okay? And that's just, and that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't happen every time you bake. But the first time you bake, it's going to, that's what it's going to do. So. Alright. Now. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you guys how to do a, uh, Make sure it's I thought I cleaned that brush. Let me make sure my brush is good and clean, guys. I thought I cleaned it because I was gonna do my blush. I was gonna do my blush. Let me just make sure. Sorry about that. This is the time where you can add, after you do your blushing layers um, and do your blushing, however you're going to do your blushing, um, after that's good and dry, you can go ahead and add, if you want to do like stork bites, you can do little stork bites. Um, you can create those with your brush or you can use the little sea sponges for that. Okay. 
or you can use anything anything you like you can use um, little doodads like this I got this at Hobby Lobby it's I don't care for it too good <laughs> honestly but you might you can use cheesecloth that's what I call it cheesecloth used in painting I don't ever use that but you can you can use you see I've used this before sea sponge and I got a these I got a pack of um, a pack of them at Hobby Lobby not Hobby Lobby Walmart for three or four bucks I think and I got this little doodad I've just accumulated so much stuff <laughs> over the years um, and I rarely use use it I mean usually I just go back to my old faithful paint brushes um, this I use sometimes um, as you can tell I've used it with blushing and it does okay okay so now with the blushing it's gonna be completely up to you the style you want the color you want you know everything like that it's completely up to you placement um, there are you know typical places that you're going to see blush on a baby cheeks um, chin ears on the outside of the ears I usually dab a bit on the forehead um, and on your limbs your knees your elbows um, around on your fingers what you know you just got to keep referencing those newborn pictures like I was telling you you, you know you just got to keep referencing referencing those photos and reference your own hands and your own legs and everything like that you've just really got to study um, the human body pretty much because that's what you're doing you're you're trying to make a piece of vinyl look like a human being <coughs> excuse me so um, and I don't know if I've if I mentioned this to you guys before or not I may have it's very possible but um, I never reference photos that have been took by professional artists of newborn babies and the reason why is because they touch those up um, in order to make the photos look nice they'll touch up spots on the face they'll touch up um, stork bites they'll touch up anything in the skin that does not ap appear clear okay so just keep that in mind I would not recommend using professional photos okay so I'm just gonna start right now by dabbing splashing color on my cheeks. Oops. Got a piece of mohair on there. Usually what I do here is I use the pounce off method and this time instead of putting on with a sponge we're putting on with our brush and pouncing off of the sponge okay and just a regular sponge will work I just don't have one made up right now for my... Actually, 
passing, is that it? Dun, dun. There it is. This one looks just as good though. But oops, I want to use um, whatever you guys are using. Okay, and this is gonna be what I call my base blushing layer. And I'll go in and tweak the color probably. And you guys can too if you want to. You can, uh, or I mean, you can just get just one layer would which the. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I wanted to come on and do a. Um, I wanted to do the nails before we actually get all of the. Um, all blushed out and all that so that we're not smearing our blush and and things uh, things like that so let me go ahead I hope I can get as good a detail as I need to here I have got this really awesome zoom here on my camera but for some reason, it's not working when I'm, I'm capturing a video. So, guys, if you can't see these details as good as you need to, I apologize. I'm hoping that you can. So, anyway, um, when it comes to nails, people do a variety of different things. Um... I usually use my magnifying glass, but for this tutorial, uh, I'm not going to. And I'm going to just show you. I'm going to show you how to do one, and then let you go ahead and do how I showed you the one for all of them. Um, you have a, a color in your kit called nail tip. And that's this right here. And it's basically a white color. I don't use it at all. For nails. Just to be honest with you. It's too white. Um, like I've told you guys many times before. Newborn student and babies do not have French manicures. They just don't. Um... So how I do my doll's nails is the way I see my fingernails, okay? If you look, you've got more than just a tip. You've got a tip, a um, purplish reddish line that runs under the tip. And you've got a fleshy light colored, about the color of your tip down here at the bottom in a half moon pattern, as well as a little purplish reddish gradient above that so that's how I like to do my nails um, some people use um, toothpicks some people use small brushes some people use prisma pencils some people use um, thinning medium some people use um, odorless thinner there's just a, a variety of ways. And you guys can um, experiment with those different ways and just see what works best for you. For me, I'm going to use a bit of Flesh 08. And then this purplish reddish color that I mixed using Bountiful Baby blush blushing color the lip nail um, the lip and nail blush and a little bit of olive, olive purple okay and so hopefully you can see that 
So I'm just going to take the straight flesh. I'm not thinning it down with anything. And put it on my paintbrush. And just a tiny bit's fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint the tip of the nail. And don't worry, if you don't have a steady hand, or if you make a mistake and get it everywhere, you can go back with a dry brush or a toothpick and clean that up. Okay, there's my tip. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this a little. Fleshy half moon. Then I'm going to have to clean that fleshy half moon up because it does not look right. Okay, and now what I'm going to do, because I feel that that's a bit too bright for the doll, and all I want is a very natural looking nail tip, I'm just going to take a sponge, just gently blot that. Not swipe, just gently touch it. And what that's going to do is that's going to lighten that up for me. Okay, and then I'm going to take a little bit of this purplish reddish mixture that I mixed up over there. I'm going to wipe off the excess. And I'm going to go right under. my white whitish nail tip okay and then I'm just going to trace the outer edge of this whitish half moon just like so I have a nail tip now I just have 19 more to go <laughs> so that's how I do my nails guys and I hope you can see that but in this case less is definitely more um, I see a lot of um, people doing this the purple color all along the nail bed here okay with no 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 fleshy color at all and you know it is pretty popular I've seen a lot of people do it and I'm kinda confused because on Caucasian babies usually don't see that um, I see it more on you see it more excuse me on uh, Italian, European, um, mainly Italian babies and things like that and babies of um, different ethnic descent. So, I mean, you're welcome to do it on your, on your babies if you'd like. If you like that look, it's no problem at all. Um, but I just like to keep as true to, you know, reality as possible. But I hope this helped you guys. I wish that I had a better camera for details so that I could give you a real good view of that finished look. But I hope I explained it enough to where you can you can do it on your own. Um, I always like I also like the look of the Prisma pencils. Um, of course, you you gotta know. Um, when to when to do that 
and I would say probably on your last layer, um, on your very, if you're using Prisma pencils and you want to um, do your nails that way, you do them on the last layer. Um, you can bake, and then you'll seal yours with um, some type of gloss or glaze or whatever you want. I always use the Aline's paper glaze on my nails anyway, just to give them that glossy. Um, glossy look so all right guys i hope that helped you out um if you have any questions you can always leave a comment down below and i'll be happy to answer those thanks guys have a great night god bless bye bye okay so this is how we're looking right now doing is simply pouncing on with my paintbrush and I am using a five round and I like this brush because it's got different size bristles got shorter and longer and it gives you a really nice texture there but any paintbrush will do I mean you don't have to have anything special just whatever you got on hand or whatever you can afford it's fine And then I always just make sure to blend the ends out into my skin real well. So we want to keep, make sure we keep everything looking just as natural as possible. blush right here on the soft spot just a little I mean it's not like it's probably it's gonna be seen probably because of the hair but I still work like it's gonna be because you never know what's gonna show through okay And my sponge, I, when I go in and pounce off, it's just to blend that in. I'm not pouncing it completely off. I mean, it does lighten it a little bit from what I've put on. But I can always go back and add more if I need to. Because taking away, I don't like taking away blush. To me, it just doesn't work well. And I've always, and I don't know why I do this, but I've always blushed right here at the back of the neck <laughs> and like I said it's not seen usually too good but I don't know I just feel like that's a place that needs to be blushed and I don't know why 
silly. But you do not have to blush yours here. But any doll you you see that I've met, I've created, you're probably going to see blush right here. Because every doll I've ever created, I've blushed there. So. And usually I don't blush a lot onto the head there. But, I mean, you can. It's up to you. Do just a little. Just a dry brush in the nose. Just a tiny dry brush on the end of the nose there. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and mix up some more paint and do that the rest of the doll. But I want to show you before leaving you off to do to do it on your own. I want to show you the uh, the fine details here. Okay. You're going to want to mix up some purple or you can use a uh, purple with a little bit of your blushing color. Um, it's completely up to you. But for ease of the tutorial here, I'm going to mix up some purple. smaller brush there. That will soak every bit of my paint. Have a smaller brush for... Yeah, here we go. I mean, every bit of my mixture. Put it the front and the back, the brush. And it's going to be pretty dark because you want these little caps to show up good. I mean, they don't need to be too bright, but at this point, you don't have to worry because if you've accidentally mix your paint too dark here, you can always just pounce them, pounce off to make them a little bit lighter. Okay, so it's no big deal. And I use a brush similar to the one I showed you um, with the eyebrows. that one's too small. Sorry guys, I know I'm having to clean these brushes as I go. I tried to do that beforehand, but control over this one too. But we'll see. I may have to switch. Okay, I'll 
see what it's giving me here. Anyway, in the, in the places that you've already blushed and it's already dried, you can go ahead and add your little capillaries. And what you're going to do is you're just adding those as little squiggly lines. And you may not be able to see because this camera doesn't do too good on tiny details. I don't know if you can see that or not. And I always put a little bit in my cheeks. And when I blush out the eyes, I'll do a little bit of my eyes. And then, um, and you can switch out if you want to do a little bit of purple and then a little bit of the red color. You can do that too. It's up to you. So. Okay, so after you get all your doll blushed out, um, if you need another coat of lip color at the end, go ahead and do that. Um, check your creases and go ahead and bake your doll after that. And then I will see you back here for the final layer. All right, guys. See you soon. Hey, guys. How's it going? Um, I'd like to welcome you to the next and final video and this is the video um, that we're going to be applying our varnish in your kit uh, you have the matte varnish which is this but smaller It's going to look about like that. Okay. And it's going to be this consistency. Sometimes it varies depending on what you get from Bountiful Baby. I actually used a, use a different varnish now. Um, for mine so <clears throat> and I just recently started doing that but I'm gonna the properties are pretty much the same and the tutorial that I'm gonna be giving you is is gonna be the same um, you'll still be able to you should be able to add the um, um, varnish and make it look like skin and that's what I'm gonna try to accomplish when I do mine it usually turns out well and you do not have to put anything with um, your varnish but if you would like you can so we're going to want to start out using a clean dry sponge and you can either use it flat or you can tear it off. I'm going to be tearing mine off with the matte varnish um, usually flat's okay because it has that texture inside of it and I will tell you um, the matte varnish does have these little oh goodness I don't know how to explain it it's like little I don't know it's like a little beads not beads but they feel like tiny little masses pretty much just masses of something I'm not sure exactly what they put in in it but um, 
it's there so when your doll dries you are going to have a texture that you can feel on the doll now in my experience my personal experience I have found that this does tend to rub off um, within a matter of a couple of days usually um, when I would get done rooting from where I handled the head so much it would be completely gone anyway so um, it's really not that big of a deal but I'm just going to go ahead and I like to get mine out of the jar and a lot of um, a lot of artists just use it straight out of the jar and that's fine there's no big I mean there's nothing wrong with that um, you can just take your wedge and go straight into your jar we just want to make sure that um, your consistency is even and you're not rubbing you've got to uh, pounce okay if you rub you're gonna mess that up so you're going to also want to use the light as your friend here because the light's going to help you tremendously okay and right now what i'm doing is i'm just stirring mine real well make sure everything's mixed up Here's it. It's good to go. Oh, my brushes are cleaning at the moment from all that painting. Shall I have a flat brush here? cleaning process up here for this one okay guys and when you're when you're completely done with this I want to make sure I tell you before I forget what you're gonna do is you're gonna bake this a total of three times at uh, whatever you're baking on and for however you're baking however long you're baking like I told you at the beginning, the uh, recommended is 265 for 8 minutes. A lot of artists tweak that depending upon their oven. I recommend that you do too. But you're going to want to um, bake three a total of 3 times. And after each time, you're going to want to rotate your limbs, okay? Just to make sure they get, everything gets real good and even. Now, if you find that your consistency um, on the matte varnish is just too stiff and it's not working for you, you can always tone that down by adding a little bit of thinner, okay? It's not going to hurt it at all. Or you can also use thinning medium. That's completely up to you. Okay. 
go ahead a little jar that put some of my paint cracked on me. Okay. And then you're just going to start pouncing this on. And as I said, you're going to use the light as your friend. And guys, make sure not to get this on your nails or your lips because you don't want that texture on there, okay? And I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've got that skin-like texture there on my forehead. So when you look at the baby, her skin, so looking like smooth vinyl, looks like skin. Okay? And that's what you're going to want to create. I mean, if that's what you want to create. Who knows? Maybe you don't want to. It's all about preference. And then guys, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's no other secrets or any instruction from here on out. I mean, it's just pouncing that on and covering the entire kit. Okay. So, when you get that finished, like I said, you're going to want to do your three bakes, and then you'll be you'll be all done. You'll be ready to But if you're not going to be adding on any hair, then you're pretty much done at this point except for adding your eyelashes <coughs> and stuff in your doll. And I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm kind of was at talking with myself, wondering if I was gonna do stuffing and waiting. But guys, you know, there's not much to it, and there's about a thousand tutorials out here on stuffing and waiting your reborns. And, I mean, really, you just weight it with whatever you're waiting with. It's going to be glass beads if you're, you know, if you're selling. Um, sometimes you'll want to use baby fat, depending upon your preferences. Um, and usually what I do is I do about a pound per limb 
I'm sorry, excuse me, not a pound for them, a half a pound per limb, about a pound, sometimes just a little bit more for the head. And then the kit and, every, and everything else, the polyfill works usually works out and works out to about um, a pound. And then with the glass beads and all, um, I make up the difference of whatever I'm wanting. So if I want a six pound baby, I've got, I know that I've already got a pound in the kit, the body uh, bag, or the body suit rather, not the body bag. Um, the weight in my arms and legs and head. I know that I've already got three pounds there. I'm sorry, four pounds there. And so um, I'll usually take and add the extra two pounds um, in the body with the polyfill. Okay. We want to make sure you don't stuff it too full. You don't want to really uh, baby that's bursting from the seams with polyfill and beads. Um, you want to keep it where the baby's, you know, really movable and newbornish. Um, typically, if if you have a doll that you that's going to be setting, it's a, if it's a setting doll, not a newborn, you'll put most of the weight there in the middle, so the weight will be mostly right here. If it's a uh, newborn and you'd like the head to go back or forwards you can kind of adjust it that way it's however you basically however you want I mean it's your doll you know what you want and that's pretty much how to do it I mean I'm not gonna make you wait forever for me to root the doll and put it together and weight it and all that silly stuff when waiting is pretty self-explanatory anyway. You just want to keep those things in mind. Um, uh, some dolls come with uh, the strings. I cannot stand the strings, just to be honest. When I have a bodysuit that comes with strings, I take them out and use uh, ties. I, you can get a big old bag of... Uh, of the twist ties at Walmart I think for about six bucks or if you're really low on cash you can get I think a small pack at the Dollar Tree for a dollar so or if you just don't have the extra money you can use the strings if you want but they come untied uh, very easily making the heads come off making the limbs fall off they get in the way. I just, I do not like them. And I would not recommend anyone using them. But if you just like them or want to use them, of course, that's your prerogative. You can very well do that. Um, you're also going to want to make sure if you are using, um, the ties you're going to want to make sure to clip those edges really nice and and um, smooth with a pair of clippers because you don't want people getting cut on your doll and you can get cut because those ends can get really sharp okay so, I believe that's about it, guys. I just want to say thank you for watching the tutorial. I do hope that you have enjoyed it. Um, this, is, this 
has been my beginner's tutorial. I don't know if I'll ever do an advanced tutorial or not. Um, it just depends on if I can ever get the time and also if I I want to get a new camera before I forego that experience. <laughs> um, I just don't feel that my camera is good enough to get those really bright zoomed in shots that that in my opinion you need to do a very good tutorial okay so I don't want to do that until I have the proper equipment to do that and I apologize guys I wish that I would have had something like that for for this tutorial for you guys but I, I didn't so um, photography and videos and things like that I mean I'm just not some type of professional at those and I mean I'm a I'm a painter <laughs> so all right guys well I hope like I said I hope you enjoyed the video I don't want to drag it out um, I'd like to hear your comments and I'd love to see photos of, of the babies that you guys created. Uh, if you'd like, you can email those in to me. My email is listed on my channel. And my address is support at rebornbirthingcenter.com. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless. Bye everybody. Advice. Honestly. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would, please give me a like and share with your friends. I'd also love to have you as, as a subscriber. Have a great day!